Hey, what's up, Lightbulb Joe here. Today we are going to discuss 102 Dalmatians. This came out November 22nd, 2000. Stars Glenn Close back as our main villainess that she is, Cruella DeVille. So, I looked it up and I was so confused when I was talking about 101 Dalmatians. Anita's last name is Deering and Roger's last name is Radcliffe. So when they get married, they are Anita and Roger Radcliffe because she takes his last name. Okay, so... Anita and Roger are not in this film. This focuses around Chloe and Kevin. Kevin works at a second chance canine rehab place. It's not really rehab. It's well, kind of rehab. And it's not a pound. It's it's getting the dogs in shape to like be adopted, kind of. And then Chloe is a um, probation officer. Uh, yeah, so it's been three years Timeline-wise, according to this film, since the events of 101 Dalmatians, Cruella has been in a rehab facility for three years, and she has gone through aversion therapy to, like, rid her of her murderous ways, kind of. But there's a caveat, and that the frequency of Big Ben's bells can re-trigger the old murderous, you know, psychosis that she carries within herself. So... Chloe's office is, Chloe's parole office is right across from Big Ben, and she, Chloe, is assigned Cruella as a parolee to keep tabs on. So during one visit, the bells go off, and then the murderous side of Cruella comes back. But before all of that, she's trying to rehabilitate herself in the public eye for the House of DeVille, and you know, have people adopt puppies and, you know, fur is murderer and all of these things. And then when the bells reset her mind, then she's back into the vengeful, ah, catch those puppies and I want revenge. Now, Dipstick is a grown puppy from per Perdita and Pongo and Chloe owns Dipstick now. Dipstick and his wife, wh wh whatever her name was, have a litter of three puppies and so Cruella gets a hold of her old French fur friend who is good at skinning and making coats and stuff and this is rated G by the way I looked it up the first one's rated G as well and this one's rated G as well it's weird because it's about murder and then um the goal is now 102 puppies because she wants to add a hood to the spotted puppy coat or poopy coat as the frenchman says um so they catch they, they buy and frame a lot of different people to get all these puppies sent to paris our story goes from london to paris where cruella is baked into a cake very interesting because she's still alive um in the french bakery and then gets thrown in jail yet again along with the frenchman but um things that i've noticed within this film is that the, the macaw is the best character of the entire entire film. And I don't remember anything about this movie aside from the talking bird. Because uh, I haven't seen this since I was a kid, honestly. Obviously it didn't make that big of an impression on me um, in the single digits in the 90s as it, well, came out in 2000, so I was 10 technically at that point. And Shrek came out in 2001, just FY information, uh, giving the time period that we're in. But the music was great. The bird was hysterical. The guy who plays um, Mr. Fantastic, I forget his name. He is the guy who plays Kevin in this. Um, yeah, so it's interesting having her, you know, go to prison again. I doubt we'll have anything further with Cruella. Now, I don't, I never saw the TV show, so I don't know what happens with the character in the cartoon. Um, the next one we're going to talk about is 101 Dalmatians 2. Patch's London Adventure, and that's still about Perdita and Pongo and their kids' story. So this is happening while Cruella is in jail, I'm assuming, if I'm getting my canon time period correct. Again, no idea if this has anything to do with the book, but it's an entertaining puppy story as we are given through uh, Disney and their brand. Um, the other thing I want to point out, in the first film, the puppies were watching the Aristocats, and in this film... The puppies are watching, not the pup, well, some puppies and other dogs are watching Lady of the Tramp. And this is the night, this, the whole spaghetti and meatball scene. 
it was a central focus for a good three, four minutes of this film. I was very intrigued because it's showing that it's very meta having a Disney film within a Disney film. And we saw that heavily within uh, Ralph Breaks the Internet, where there was Disney properties galore within a Disney film. Loved it. I love that meta type of thing that happens. Uh, yes, so 102 Dalmatians. Very entertaining. Very scandalous. I want to bake a cake. I want to bake a Cruella cake, just like that. And dazzle it with sprinkles and frosting galore and shove her in a window. Um, how dare her threaten to murder more puppies for our coat. <laughs> It's a funny movie. That 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 bird is hysterical. The fact that he thinks he's a Rottweiler and then he can fly, and then he's just like, "Oh, what do these things do?" And then everybody's like, "Flap your wings!" And then he flaps his wings, and he's like, "Oh, that's what these are for." It gets me every time. Every time. Okay, on to the next one. <laughs> Which you might love.